on its first drive after the LA wildfire shutdown operations, Perseverance backtracked uphill to a slab of outcrop it investigated previously. Turns out there's something here that warranted the first new core sample in six months on this 200th episode of Mars Guy. We last left Perseverance departing from its trek down the rim of Jezero Crater to instead drive back uphill about 138 meters to some slabby outcrops it visited in December. Here's Mars Guy for scale. Shortly after I posted that episode, Perseverance repositioned to the same location where it abraded a spot in this rock for the arm mounted instruments to investigate. Apparently, after driving away from this outcrop the first time, the team realized that it offered something that the subsequent one downslope didn't, so it returned for another look. This time, it deployed the drill and its coring bit to collect a sample for eventual return to Earth. This operation is always carefully considered because of the limited number of sample tubes Perseverance carries. It's already used 25 of the 38 available tubes. Now this one makes 26. Unfortunately, the view with cash cam looking down inside the tube after it was delivered on board the rover shows only a few pieces of rock at the bottom. These are all that were retained in the tube. Apparently the rest fell out, a consequence of an outcrop more crumbly than the coring bit was designed for. The design of the coring bit and tube is actually pretty clever and eccentric, as in off-axis, not strange. It's easiest to see in the asymmetric flange at the tip of the sample tube. That tube goes into the hollow bit, which has wall thickness that varies around the circumference. The bit and tube are on axis during the drilling operation. When finished, the tube is locked in place and then the bit is rotated 180 degrees, forcing them out of alignment and shearing the core off at its base. The misalignment keeps the core from falling out when the bit is lifted out of the hole. This works even if the core is in pieces, but not if the pieces are smaller than the opening. That's what happened on the current sample, and only two before. But even these small nuggets of Mars would be scientific gold if brought back to Earth. As I've presented in previous episodes, the outcrop appears to be composed of ejecta from the impact event that formed Jezero Crater. That means it contains pieces of rock that are older than all the ones sampled previously by Perseverance inside Jezero, and they're from greater depth. So this sample could provide information about the conditions on Mars during its warmer and wetter earliest history. We saw this week how tiny pieces of the asteroid Bennu collected by the OSIRIS-REx mission and returned to Earth reveal the conditions on its larger parent asteroid in the early solar system before it was smashed apart. The conditions were warm and wet enough to produce a range of salts and other water-related minerals. The sample prep and lab equipment needed for analyses like these can't possibly be sent to Mars on rovers. So even the small bits of rock collected by Perseverance and returned to Earth have the potential to tell geological stories about early Mars and maybe even biological ones. And yes, the value of these precious nuggets is way more than their weight in gold by a factor of about 300,000 or more. 